Hearing from a Gilbert couple, they spent $400,000 suing Disneyland. Who were once members of Disneyland's Club 33. Disney basically banned them from Club 33. Now Disney did this because they claimed that he smelled like adult beverages when they found him passed out. But it's interesting in terms of like what Disney's alleging versus perhaps what actually happened seems a little bit... Uh... Everyone's favorite evil company is back in the news again, and that is, of course, Disney. <laughs> I talked about Disney a couple of weeks ago, how they had this lawsuit with someone that basically passed away. That was due to them having an allergic reaction at one of their parks, and Disney tried to pull this weird, bizarre Uno reverse card from hell, basically saying, um, actually, you subscribe to Disney+, Plus, and if you read the small text, it says we own your soul and you can never sue us. I also want to say to anyone that's worried, the Darkwood video is still coming out out. It is coming out on Friday, so three days from now. And when the video drops, you'll be able to buy some exclusive merch like this. So yeah, mark in your calendars, three days, it is happening, or I'll shut down my entire channel. Now, someone at Disney does have a heart, thank God. I guess one of them was watching like The Fox and the Hound or Bambi because Disney came out recently saying that they're dropping the terms of the lawsuit. Basically, they're saying like they're not going to acknowledge what they said in Disney+. Plus. Now, is that from the goodness of their own heart or probably because they realized it would backfire and they'd have to change the entire terms of service? Probably the latter, but for now, thankfully, that's an open and shut case. But this has led me down a huge rabbit hole, especially with how like secretive Disney is. I'm sure you've seen many bizarre claims at Disneyland. Like for example, they've got this thing called go away green, which is when they purposely paint things this like boring green color so your eyes don't fixate on it. Basically tricking your brain into not focusing on things Disney doesn't want you to see. It's basically the Disney equivalent of like military camo. And the funny thing is now that I've mentioned go away green, if you haven't seen it from like the 50,000 thousandth TikTok talking about it, you will now not be able to unsee it. Like any kind of street light, studio light, any kind of speaker, it usually is all painted in this go away green. So you're not really focusing on it. Now, Disney is involved in yet another lawsuit, and this involves the very secretive club at Disney called Club 33. So the two protagonists of today's adventure is Scott and Diana Anderson. Now, these two recently tried to sue Disney to get access back into Club 33 at Disneyland. If you don't know what Club 33 is, basically it's this private dining experience that you can have. And there's a couple of them placed across Disneyland. So I'm sure you've heard the term Disney adults, basically man children that just spend way too much money at Disneyland. And I'll be honest, I've been to Disneyland. I went to the one in France when I was like 10 years old. I went to the one in California in America like four or five years ago. They're okay. They're pretty fun. I think the funny thing is when I went to Disneyland Paris as a child, I think my parents took me and my sister or something. It was like, I remember just being absolutely terrified by all the rides. But as soon as I went on them, I was like, ooh, this is actually kind of fun. But obviously that does not extend to rides like the Tower of Terror. If you've seen that one and you enjoy it, you are some kind of psychopath. I remember riding that one uh, when I went to America like five years ago. And when I got off, my watch, my Fitbit was in fat burning mode just because my heart rate was so high. If you don't know what the Tower of Terror is, it's basically this ride that just takes you all the way up to the top of the amusement park. So you can see everyone, say your goodbyes, and then it drops you and you die. Okay, the, the second bit is a lie. It does slow down, but it is basically just a pure adrenaline junkie ride. Funny thing about the Tower of Terror as well, there's actually a picture circulating around online of the band Death Grips that went on the Tower of Terror. And I'm not even joking, this is probably the only picture available of MC Ride actually smiling. Did I just weakly try to shoehorn in that side quest so I could talk about Death Grips again? Yes. And also, why is MC Ride smiling so much? Well, seeming he's up in the atmosphere, he's basically the furthest possible distance away from an actual Death Grips fan. So again, before I went on that tangent, Disneyland adults, they are the man children. They spent an insane amount of money trying to basically worship their corporate overlords. Now, Club 33 members are Disney adults leveled up because they have an insane amount of money because to get into Club 33, it isn't easy. It's not simply a membership dedicated thing. It's money. Now, the first Club 33 was established in Anaheim in California. And apparently this club was based off... I, I can't say the word based, like, God, ironically, I can't say it with a straight face. My brain is rotten. It was inspired by an experience Walt Disney had at the 1964 New York World's Fair. Now, Club 33 is very particular about 
about who it lets in. I mean, a good example is memberships cost $25,000 and that is for the first year. And then because Disney are nice, you only have to pay a reoccurring $10,000 every subsequent year. And obviously there's loads of celebrities that just get access to it because they're famous. Uh, Tom Hanks, Elton John, Rebel Wilson, and Christina Aguilera. I also heard that they play Good Kid Mad City on repeat. Metro's, Metro's booming track. Now I'm looking online as well about like the dress code. It's business casual. And then they've got very strange rules about filming. Can I take pictures in Club 33? Yes, you can take pictures, but with exceptions. No photos can be taken of other guests in the restaurant, which is fair. But then also no photos are allowed in the bathrooms, which again is fair. But then there's no videos. So you can take as many pictures as you want. You just can't take any videos. But again, I'll be honest, for something that's 20k a year and then you're paying 10,000 afterwards. And on top of that as well, like you're probably waiting years to even be able to pay that ridiculous amount of money. It doesn't look anything insane. It just looks like a, you know, a very nice like Michelin star restaurant. And again, like I'm sure the food and everything they have is amazing. But I really just can't get over the 20k a year thing that's going to be rent free in my head. Apparently as well, Club 33 is going to get its own movie. Yeah, that's definitely needed. Holy crap, guys. Fine dining, but you have to pay $20,000 to get in. So Scott and Diana, who I mentioned earlier, they're big Disney fans. If paying that amount of money didn't communicate that, I'm not sure what else to tell you. Now, Diana especially apparently was a huge fan even since she was a child. And keep in mind as well, these two are both 60 years old. I'll be honest, I didn't even watch that many Disney films as a kid. I'd always watch like, you know, the, the off-brand Disney. Like, instead of watching, I don't know, like, Bambi or something, I'd watch Fern Gully instead. I think that's the film where, like, Robin Williams voices a bat for some reason. I'm blind! Oh, <laughs> no! I can see it's a miracle. Now, I did try to look into what Disney films came out in the 70s, which would have been 50 years ago. So when, you know, these two were basically kids. And um, we've got uh, Herbie Rides Again. Such a classic. The Island at the Top of the World. The Castaway Cowboy. Bears and I. And Nessie. What the hell is that film? Nessie? I'll be honest. I don't think anyone cares about Disney until they started doing animation. Obviously, before that as well, in the 50s, like this was even before their time. You had like the golden age of Disney, like Lady and the Tramp, Cinderella, like all those kinds of films, uh, Peter Pan as well. So this couple apparently visit Disneyland 60 to 80 times a year. Honestly, I feel like Disneyland, Disney World, it's something you can do like once in your lifetime. And it's like, oh, that's that's fun. We enjoyed ourselves. But 60 to 80 times a year? Bro, how do you not get bored? Like, like no meme. I know that they change the rides like every couple of years or so. They have like different themes every couple of months. But like, oh my God. You know, I'm not going to sit here and call it sad, right? I'm not going to be like, oh, that's so cringe. 60 year olds having fun instead of just like, you know, being at home watching daytime TV while they're heat and get shot off. That was a jab at the UK government currently, by the way. Like, it is wholesome. They're older. You know, they're still, you know, living life, probably getting out more than I am. But I, I just don't understand how 80 times a year, like, bro, I can see a film or something. Like, <laughs> To be fair, there's probably cinemas at Disneyland. So there you go. It's probably just, yeah, you just do anything there. So they want to go to Anaheim, right, in California. But despite that, they live in Arizona. So adding their membership dues, uh, travel and hotel expenses, they spend close to $125,000 a year just to go to Disney. And just to add salt into the wound, you'd think with, you know, that much money, they'd get like bumped up on the waiting list. No, they had to wait over 10 years, 12 years to be exact. They applied back in 2012 and only recently actually got access into the program. Now, you're probably wondering, how can they afford that? Is their son a YouTuber? Are they doing day trading? Are they dabbling in a little bit of Dogecoin? No, they live in Arizona, so chances are the husband probably owns a golf course. Now, despite paying an insane amount of money, despite the fact waiting over 10 years, they have recently been banned from Club 33 because apparently one of the people working at Disney actually found Scott Anderson being drunk in public. That's the claim that Disney are making, by the way. And instead of thinking, you know, okay, you caught me at a cup of wines. I passed out on a park bench. Eh, what are you going to do about it, eh? No, instead they are taking Disney to court, trying to sue them for $400,000, which to be fair, like isn't actually a lot considering how much they pay every year and is actually setting his retirement back by five years. And the weird thing looking into it as well, like the couple don't even seem that annoyed. They just want Disney to let them back in again. So on the 3rd of September, it was actually reported that security guards found Scott near the entrance of the Disney California Adventure supposedly showing signs and smelling like he was drunk. He was having issues slurring and difficulty standing up on his own. And even one of the guards specifically recalled that his breath smelled a lot like alcohol. According to Scott, his own defense, he had about three drinks. I'm not sure what that was. Three beers, three Vimdos. But his main defense is he was having migraine associated vertigo and basically wanted to like, you know, sit on the bench to relax. 
For reference, by the way, Club 33 does have some very strict rules, including the dress code that I mentioned earlier, which is more like business casual, but also having a rule about being publicly intoxicated around the park. You can't do it. And the funny thing is, looking at the rules, it's actually aged really badly. So in Disneyland, you can get alcohol, you can get drunk, you can be drunk, as long as you're, you know, not really being a nuisance. You know, if you're a regular guest, you can drink. But if you're a Club 33 member, despite paying all this money, you actually have that taken away. You basically can't go out and be drunk. And Club 33 33 used to be the only place on Disney premises originally that would serve alcohol. So basically, they're now trying to sue Disney for wrongful expulsion, but also the fact as well, they still had like, you know, unused, I think it was around four months or so left that they paid for that they're not allowed to use now. So they were kicked straight out of Club 33. They also said as well that they've been like personally targeted by Club 33 because they complained about another club member basically harassing staff. And also keep in mind, they're not banned from like Disney World. They're just banned from going into to Club 33, which like, yeah, that that's kind of fair. What I mean by that, by the way, is like, it's fair for them to sue. I don't think it's fair that they're being like kicked out or banned. I just think it's like, if you're paying again, like well over $100,000 a year just to get into a club with the travel expenses and the hotels, just to be told, nah, nah, you, you had one beer and you sat on a bench, you're gone. Now, this isn't the only time that this couple have actually had tension at Club 33. Apparently a couple of years ago, before they got kicked out, Diana, the wife was caught using uh, the F-bum, which apparently didn't sit well with the crew at the time. According to Diana, the reason for this, uh, you know, th th this explosive F-bomb was because a friend knocked over her mimosa, her drink. And then when they asked the server for a new one, the server only offered basically water or tea. So Diana realized, like most alcoholics, that she was being cut off. Basically, they thought she was drunk, she had too much, and they didn't want to serve her alcohol anymore. So she threw the F-bomb at him and was told to leave shortly after. Now, as well, she did have two glasses of wine at the time, but that really didn't mess with the Club 33 membership at all. Now, again, if you remember the previous video, I talked about Disney how they, you know, use like a terms of service of Disney Plus to try to own someone. If you go up against Disney, you will lose. They will do anything that they can, basically borderline illegal, to try to get that lawsuit dismissed. Okay, what's a good example of going up against Disney in a lawsuit? Okay, Dark Souls 3, this is like soul level one deprived with the big club and you're going up against the dancer of the Boreal Valley. You know how you can do that? How you can beat the dancer at the beginning of the game, even though you shouldn't? You really shouldn't? It takes you about three hours? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Oh wait, no, never mind. It's not like that. It's like that. You beat the dancer and then you get invaded by a phantom who probably hacks your game to reset your character. So not too long after this rejection from Disney, the couple, which is really, really surprising, they leaked everything, all of their experiences at Club 33 to give people an understanding of how, you know, this VIP club is ran. Because again, this is not a new news story, but them leaking everything did actually happen pretty recently. And it's gave us a huge insight into how Club 33 works. So not only do we get law mastered on how like Disney obsessed this couple are, but also they shared a lot more info on how Club 33 actually works. So apparently there's two levels of membership, right? Because, you know, paying that ridiculous amount of money isn't enough. We've got to have tiers now. So the opening tier is 25 grand, 25 grand straight away. And then the other one is 40 grand. And also on top of that 40 grand as well, again, like I said earlier, you need to keep paying the $10,000 a year just to keep the membership going. You know, because as we know, Disney, they're, they're really hurting for money, guys. The acolyte flopped. They're not doing season two. They're going to make us pay for it. Now, this membership gets you a ton of other perks as well. Like for example, five VIP tours per person, 100 park tickets for guests, access to the food and liquor, you know, and not the average park experience. You can even apparently ride Walt Disney's personal car on the railroad and you get exclusive Club 33 merch because of course, paying $40,000 and then 10,000 on top of that every year, I want a t-shirt. Another perk as well, which people kind of overlooked is the fact that you get access to Walt Disney's old apartment and you can actually even use the bathroom there as well. So the club has incredibly strict rules. Again, like there's a, there's a no filming policy, there's no photo photos in the bathrooms. You're also not allowed to take pictures of other people, like I said earlier, with the guests, mostly because there's, you know, there's probably going to be other celebrities in there at the time. Apparently as well, the couple actually shared that Tom Hanks had the entire club closed down for his family on Thanksgiving and Rebel Wilson got suspended because she took a picture in the bathroom. So again, is getting into Club 33 actually worth it? Is it worth it sacrificing time and money? 12 year waiting list, $50,000. No, no, I don't think it is. Again, I've seen some pictures on the inside that people have posted online. You get, oh, you get, you get a nice little, a nice little restaurant, a nice little menu. Oh, you get alcohol, but you can't drink the alcohol because if you go and sit on a bench, 
uh, and have a vertigo induced migraine, you lose. You lose your membership. I mean, personally, if I spent that amount of money to get into a club and I got kicked out, I'd be annoyed. But at the same time, I feel like I kind of deserved it because I spent that amount of money to get into a club. Some celebrities have done some weird stuff there as well. I already talked about the Tom Hanks stuff, but apparently Katy Perry was auctioning off access to the lounge for $160,000, which by the way, as you can imagine, was very quickly shut down by Disney. Again, keep in mind, going to Disneyland like already is expensive. If you're like the average earner in the UK or in America, it's really going to eat into your account. You know, it's like one to $200 for basically a, a one day park pass as an adult. And if you want to do both Disney parks in a day in California, it will cost anywhere between $160 to $250. And that's not including parking, food, drinks, merch, all the little garbage things that you're going to buy. I'll be honest, the only Disney memorabilia I've bought in my life when I was in uh, the, the, the Paris one when I was like 10 years old, I bought like a Mickey Mouse spoon. <laughs> I don't know why I bought it. I have no idea. It's all garbage. It's like made in China anyway. But again, you know, if you've got that special kind of autism where you just fixate on something and, and you need to, you know, live it and reenact it. I get it. Just make sure you got a lot of money for it. You know, you keep going to Club 33 at Disneyland and getting your lobster risotto or whatever they serve there. I'm going to keep commissioning my circles.